Welcome to 4 Minute Film School. My name is Valentina V and today we are taking a look at how to use the same setup and create three completely different lighting looks. Let's look at it. I'm here with commercial DP Dave Cortez. He's worked with Yamaha, Samsung, Spotify, and today's kind of an experiment. We are taking the same scene, the same talent, the same backgrounds, the same lighting even, and we're just turning lights on and off to create different looks. So Dave, what are some things we are keeping in mind for our setups today? So the first thing is that we're gonna be exposing for our background first before we expose for our talent. We're gonna be really keeping in mind our practicals, where they're placed, and using those to motivate the key. And then we're also going to be shifting around with our color temperature to be able to use that as a tool to tell different times day. All right, sounds good. Let's take a look at our first setup. So this first look is what we're calling the low-key look. What does sort of low-key mean when we're talking about lighting and cinematography? Low-key is very motivated by the practicals and the sources that you see in the frame. So whether that's a window, a lamp, it always feels like the light is coming from that source. In general, we're going to be motivating with a relatively high exposure ratio on the face, meaning that the key side is a lot brighter than the fill side. And that applies to the subject as well as the background, so it feels like they're all within the same environment and that they fit in with each other. So the first light that you placed in the scene was a 300D to sort of augment the window light and make it like the light is actually coming from the window, right? Correct, so we needed to increase the amount of exposure that was hitting the back side of her head, but that wasn't all coming from the window. So we added that unit that we see clamped up to the ceiling, and then we put on a light dome along with a control grid that allowed us to keep it off of the floor, keep it off of everywhere but the subject. So we were really able to control that backlight. You also added the same fixture with a light dome and a grid off on camera left. And I'm just wondering why add a grid at all? We wanted to have the light playing on the subject's face, but not playing necessarily on the floor, the lamp itself that was next to her, um, the chair. We wanted to keep it very centered on her face. And we were able to do that without having to add a bottomer and siders just by tilting up the light light with the control grid on it. So that's it for the lights. Mm -hmm. You had one more thing in there. What was that? So we had a four by bleached muslin just a little bit off to the right of camera and that was there to add a little bit extra light onto the fill side. So let's take a look at how you built that. So the second look is kind of similar, but different. It's a high key look. So you kept two lights the same, the 300D with the light dome up top, mm -hmm. the 300D with the light dome camera left, but you introduced even more light from the left side. Correct, so I added two 300Ds through a four by frame of 129, which is heavy frost, and then that went through an eight by frame of magic cloth. So I also noticed that there was a cutter on the bottom of that fixture preventing some of the lighting from falling out onto the bottom of the frame. What was that? Yeah, so the, the eight by frame was giving a really soft source onto the subject, but it was also having a very obvious gradient on the floor. So you know that there's like a fake fixture placed there. So what we did with that was a eight foot wag flag bottomer, which is used to cut off the light from the floor and make it look more even as it hits the subject. So it's basically almost the exact same setup as before. You just added a big soft key off to the left side of your camera. Exactly, that reduces the contrast ratio on the subject's face. It also reduces the contrast ratio in the background. All right, let's take a look at how you built it. So this last setup looks completely different. I like to call it the indoor golden hour. It's mm -hmm. sort of like the sunset is behind the window and it's yeah. nice and warm, but it's not because the lights were warmer. You actually changed the white balance in the camera. Absolutely, so we switched the white balance from 5500 to 9000 and that just brought everything warmer without having to put a gel on every single fixture, um, which prevented a lot of exposure loss that comes with gels and it also is just a lot more of a hassle to put gels on everything. So by shifting our color temperature, we were make to, able to make the scene feel warmer without having to do much work on the actual fixtures. That's a really good trick. You don't have enough CTO to cover that entire window and Absolutely. make it warm. So as far as that window, what did you do to it to sort of knock down the exposure? So we did put a eight by eight frame of bleach muslin behind the window, which was used just to knock down the exposure. So we were able to transition the key from the window behind her to the lamp next to her. So the rest of your lighting was really being motivated by this one fixture in the middle, this desk lamp mm -hmm. that you had. And uh, you changed the bulb inside to something else. 
what did you do? So I put a Philips Hue bulb into that fixture, which allowed me to first change the color temperature to 6500, which brought it up closer to the blue of the daylight outside. So when our color temperature shifted to 9000, that still felt like a tungsten desk lamp. It became even warmer. Exactly, right? And then also by having it be a Philips Hue fixture, we were able to dim down and maintain the same color temperature, which you wouldn't be able to do with incandescent bulb. The 300D on the side, camera left, stayed. Exactly. It was already in a really good place to be augmenting the light coming from that lamp next to her. So that became the rim light at that point, which became a little bit more sighty. You also kept that 8x8 eight eight combination fixture from before, mm -hmm. but you dimmed it. Yeah, we just dimmed it down a little bit just so it doesn't feel like there's too much exposure coming onto the face from the front. There's this like really cool additional fixture, these streaks of light going through the background. How did you accomplish that? So we used a 300D along with the spotlight attachment, and we just sent that through some haze with a gobo inside of it, which created the beams in the background. I think it's really important that you also focused the spotlight attachment, not at the wall, but like right in the middle of those mm -hmm. beams. So right where those beams were cutting through the image, they were crisp and sharp and looked really good. Let's take a look. So one more time, what should we be aware of if we're trying to replicate these kind of setups at home? You should be lighting for your background and you should be building off of that to when you're deciding what your motivation is. You should be keeping an eye on practicals and making sure that they make sense within the scene and that your key is augmented from a practical. And then also use your white balance to help dictate the time of day or to dictate the mood in the room. This leads me to our comment question of the week, which is, I want to know what is in your kit and how did you use it last time you lit a person, someone with a face? I want to see, I want to know. The best comment is going to win an SKB case, which is the kit but without the lights in it. If you like the show, if you like what we do here, then please subscribe, give us a like, comment other things besides just the common question, because I want to know, are we doing a good job? And if you have any questions for either of us, you can find us down below on social media. Dave Cortez actually has the Instagram handle, Dave Cortez. But anyway, uh, have a great day. Bye.